It is compassion, then, that is the best protection. It is also, as the great masters of the past have always known, the source of all healing. Suppose you have a disease such as cancer or AIDS. By taking on the sickness of those suffering like you, in addition to your own pain, with a mind full of compassion, you will, beyond any doubt, purify the past negative karma that is the cause now and in the future of the continuation of your suffering. In Tibet, I remember hearing there were many extraordinary cases of people who, when they heard they were dying of a terminal illness, gave away everything they had and went to the cemetery to die. There, they practiced taking on the suffering of others. And what is amazing is that instead of dying, they returned home fully healed. Working with the dying, I have experienced again and again, gives all who do so a direct opportunity to practice compassion in action and in the situation where it is probably most deeply needed of all. Your compassion can have perhaps three essential benefits for the dying person. First, because it is opening your heart, you will find it easier to show the dying person the kind of unconditional love I have spoken about and which they need so much. On a deeper spiritual level, I have seen again and again how if you try to embody compassion and act out of the heart of compassion, you will create an atmosphere in which the other person can be inspired to imagine the spiritual dimension or even take up spiritual practice. On the deepest level of all, if you do constantly practice compassion for the dying person and in turn inspire them to do the same, you might not only heal them spiritually, but perhaps even physically too. And you will discover for yourself with wonder what all the spiritual masters know, that the power of compassion has no bounds. Asanga was one of the most famous Indian Buddhist saints and lived in the 4th century. He went to the mountains to do a solitary retreat, concentrating all his meditation practice on the Buddha Maitreya, in the fervent hope that he would be blessed with a vision of this Buddha and receive teachings from him. For six years, Asanga meditated in extreme hardship, but did not even have one auspicious dream. He was disheartened, and thought he would never succeed with his aspiration to meet the Buddha Maitreya, so he abandoned his retreat and left his hermitage. He had not gone far down the road when he saw a man rubbing an enormous iron bar with a strip of silk. Asanga went up to him and asked him what he was doing. I haven't got a needle, the man replied, so I'm going to make one out of this iron bar. Asanga stared at him, astounded. Even if the man were able to manage it in a hundred years, he thought, what would be the point? He said to himself, look at the trouble people give themselves over things that are totally absurd. You are doing something really valuable, spiritual practice, and you're not nearly so dedicated. He turned around and went back to his retreat. Another three years went by, still without the slightest sign from the Buddha Maitreya. Now I know for certain, he thought, I am never going to succeed. So he left again and soon came to a bend in the road where there was a huge rock, so tall it seemed to touch the sky. At the foot of the rock was a man busily rubbing it with a feather soaked in water. What are you doing? Asanga asked. This rock is so big, it's stopping the sun from shining on my house, so I'm trying to get rid of it. Asanga was amazed at the man's indefatigable energy and ashamed at his own lack of dedication. He returned to his retreat. Three more years passed, and still he had not even had a single good dream. He decided once and for all that it was hopeless, and he left his retreat for good. The day wore on, and in the afternoon he came across a dog lying by the side of the road. It had only its front legs, and the whole of the lower part of its body was rotting and covered with maggots. Despite its pitiful condition, the dog was snapping at passers-by 
and pathetically trying to bite them by dragging itself along the ground with its two good legs. Asanga was overwhelmed with a vivid and unbearable feeling of compassion. He cut a piece of flesh off his own body and gave it to the dog to eat. Then he bent down to take off the maggots that were consuming the dog's body. But he suddenly thought he might hurt them if he tried to pull them out with his fingers, and he realized that the only way to remove them would be on his tongue. Asanga knelt on the ground and, looking at the horrible, festering, writhing mass, closed his eyes. He leaned closer and put out his tongue. The next thing he knew, his tongue was touching the ground. He opened his eyes and looked up. The dog was gone. There in its place was the Buddha Maitreya, ringed by a shimmering aura of light. At last, said Asanga, why did you never appear to me before? Maitreya spoke softly. It is not true that I have never appeared to you before. I was with you all the time, but your negative karma and obscurations prevented you from seeing me. Your twelve years of practice dissolved them slightly so that you were at last able to see the dog. Then, thanks to your genuine and heartfelt compassion, all those obscurations were completely swept away and you can see me before you with your very own eyes. If you don't believe that this is what happened, put me on your shoulder and try and see if anyone else can see me. Asanga put Maitreya on his right shoulder and went to the marketplace, where he began to ask everyone, What have I got on my shoulder? Nothing, most people said, and hurried on. Only one old woman, whose karma had been slightly purified, answered, You've got a rotting corpse of an old dog on your shoulder, that's all. Asanga at last understood the boundless power of compassion that had purified and transformed his karma, and so made him a vessel fit to receive the vision and instruction of Maitreya. Then the Buddha Maitreya, whose name means loving kindness, took Asanga to a heavenly realm and there gave him many sublime teachings that are among the most important in the whole of Buddhism.